The VolQuest Two Minute Drill is brought to you by Craven Wings. With Rob Lewis, Brent Hubs, VolQuest.com, a little full court press as Tennessee knocks off top ranked Alabama. The full court press brought to you by our good friends at Craven Wings. Don't forget, they've got the fourth annual Grim Reaper Challenge going on right now. The finals for that will be in March where you can compete against Jacob Warren. The second semifinal is coming up Saturday, February the 18th at 2 o'clock at their Chodo location. That is the Grim Reaper Challenge with our good friends at Craven Wings. It looked grim going into this game, Rob Lewis, and it was certainly a challenge for Tennessee against Alabama. Vols come away with a victory. Give me your big picture thought on this win first. <laughs> I wrote this over. It's the, it's the most Rick Barnes thing ever, the most Rick Barnes win ever to me since he's been here. I mean, they're shorthanded. They, they've lost three out of four. Everybody's down on them. You get the number one team in the country coming in. They're 12-0 and 0 in the SEC. And Tennessee just finds a way. I mean, it wasn't pretty. Tennessee didn't shoot the ball great. Um, you know, they, they didn't have anybody just blow up for 25 points. They just, they out-toughed Alabama. They turned them over 19 times. They turned those turnovers into points. And, you know, the highest scoring team in the SEC, the only team in the SEC scoring 80-plus a game, Tennessee holds them to under 60 for the first time all season long. And, you know, really just, just controlled the last five or six minutes of the game in, in what was a really high-level basketball game. Yeah, I thought at one point Rick Barnes was back at Providence and I was looking for uh, St. John's or I was looking for somebody in the Big East because, that, that I mean, all it was missing was Bill Rafferty calling the game because that was an old-school slugfest. The officials clearly let this game be physical, let players dictate. I'm not saying it was poorly officiated. I think it was well officiated, but it was a physical game where Tennessee matched that physicality and they matched it in the post with a couple of guys in Jonas Adu, who was unbelievable. Euros Plavich off the bench in 14 minutes, 10 points, four rebounds. But Adu's night tonight, Rob, three blocks don't does not tell the story about his rim protection tonight, in my opinion. No, he he altered. I would I would estimate at least twice that many shots, and you know twelve points, eleven rebounds, a double double. They couldn't come at a more clutch time. This wasn't you know grabbing fourteen rebounds against McNeese State. I mean this was this was a big boy basketball game. I mean I, I I've listened to arguments, but I think when you talk about depth and skill and athleticism, Alabama may have the best front line in, in the league with with Gurley with Clowney. Um, in there, I mean, they're certainly in the argument, and Adu was was the most impactful big on the floor tonight. And it wasn't he didn't put up empty stats. He was the, to me, he was the most impactful player on the floor in the last eight minutes. He had he had a couple blocks. He had one. I mean, there was one player I remember vividly where Alabama misses a free throw. Brandon Miller comes up with a great rebound, and it looks like just a chippy. And Adu comes from the weak side to challenge a shot. Miller can, can't finish over him. They go down on the other end. There's about five minutes left, and Adu gets an offensive rebound put back that takes a four-point game to a six-point game, which would have been a two-point game had Miller converted what looked like an easy layup. I, I can't say enough about Jonas. Tennessee got a, a lot of stuffed-up performers. As you mentioned Euros, a guy that you know is not always my favorite, but man, he came through tonight. He was four-four. Didn't do anything silly. You know, didn't get caught up in any emotions. Zakai didn't shoot it great, but he had eight assists and no turnovers in that kind of game, that kind of physicality. Helter Skelter, I thought that was tremendous. And, and Santiago, 15 points and, and with 6-2 guard, he has eight rebounds. Again, in that kind of game, with that kind of athleticism on the floor, as physical it was. And I, and I agree with you, Brent. I, I give the officials credit tonight. I'm not shy about being critical a lot of times, and they all, they give you plenty of opportunities for it. I, I like the way they let them play tonight. Nobody got the bonus in the first half until the, there were two minutes left. And then Alabama, you know, Rick probably didn't like it, didn't get whistled for their first foul in the second half until there was under 13, 13 minutes to play. Yeah. And, and before we move on to the turnovers and a couple other things, I, I think you got to give a shout out too to Adu for his ability to play through foul trouble. Being, being able to be on the floor with four fouls and to stay on the floor the final four minutes, Rob. We're big in this basketball game because Alabama was at that point. They were just kind of putting their head down and going to the rim. Tennessee had to have rim protection. Jonas's maturity there on the court to play without fouling and alter shots was a huge part in Tennessee's ability to turn that into a free throw contest at the end of the game. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Could, could not agree more. And uh, I, I just thought he answered the bell in, in a big, big way tonight. I mean, you didn't. Tennessee was going to get a lot of stepped up performances with, with Phillips out, with Josiah out. 
and, and Jonas certainly gave them one. And you know, I've I've, I've been puffing I've, I've been puffing Jonas since November. You know, I'd play him more early, live with, live with the mistakes when he made them. I just think his ceiling is is higher than anybody's on this team, and outside of Brandon Miller, higher than anybody's that was on that court tonight. In, in my opinion, when you're talking long term, three four years down the road, and, and I just the the little things you're talking about, not making the silly foul when when your team needs you on the floor, not going over the back. You know, not going too hard after a block. It was it was pitiful. I mean, if he if he fouls out because he picked up his fourth with a little more than five minutes to play, Rick sat him for a, maybe a minute, and then I think he brought him back in. And after the under four media timeout, I mean, it's still a four six point game right there. If Jonas goes out with five, I you know Tennessee may hang on, but it's a lot harder. Yeah, it certainly is. He 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 was terrific. The turnovers were the story too. You mentioned Zakai Ziegler in thirty six minutes doesn't have a turnover. Neither did Santi um, in, in a game where there was a lot, you know, those guys had to handle the ball a lot. No turnovers between those two. Alabama, Tennessee forces 19 turnovers, turns them into 26 points. That is probably the biggest team stat of this game, is it not? I mean, Tennessee's defense has been really good all year long. I don't know that they've been able to capitalize on turnovers with getting points out of those turnovers the way they did tonight all season long. Yeah, and a big reason why, however, eleven they had they had nineteen turnovers. Eleven of them came off steals, so they're they're not dead ball turnovers. They're ball, you know, open Good leading point. to broken court, open court situations, um, and, and and Tennessee took advantage in a huge way. That that is so crucial for this team. That you know, we all know they can they can struggle to score, and you know, when you got two potential double digit scores out of the lineup tonight, it was imperative that they come up with some with some easy buckets, and they did that you know just repeatedly and. It would the 26 points off turnovers gets highlighted to an insane degree when you see that Alabama, Tennessee had eight turnovers, Alabama had two points off, off those turnovers. So you're essentially talking about Tennessee had 10 extra possessions in the game that, that they turned it to 24 more points than Alabama. You, you can't overestimate how big that was. All right, Rob, you've seen a lot of basketball in that gym, you've seen a lot of basketball on the road. When's the last time you saw someone play 26 minutes, go 0 of 4 from the floor, turn it over twice, but affect the game the way Jamal Meshack did tonight? He had the highest plus minus on the team, plus nine. When Tennessee, when he, Tennessee was plus nine with him on the floor tonight, and when you rattle off that box score, I would say, I mean, I'd, I'd obviously have to, we'd, we'd have to make Eric Kane Eric go through a bunch of old box scores to really get the answer. <laughs> Uh, he'll have that on the podcast next next Tuesday, but I, I'm going to say never. I mean, just the way and t- Tennessee was going to need to have him come through tonight, not necessarily offensively, but probably your top two guys that were going to guard Brandon Miller tonight were going to be Josiah James and Julian Phillips. I would have guessed for you know probably 80 percent of the 40 minutes or however long um, Miller was on the floor, and Mayshack had to step up and take that on. I mean, I, I think that's why he got the start instead of Tyreek Key was purely. To you know, to to see if they had somebody that could handle Miller, and like I thought, Rick Barnes said it really well on Monday. Like a player like Miller, who he called a great player, and I agree, you're not going to stop him. You just hope at the end of the night you make him work for what he gets. And and Meshack and whoever else helped out did that. Miller got the 15 points, but he was four of 11 from the floor, and just never you know looked like he was getting ready to get on one of those streaks like we've seen him where he can just you know blow up and hit three or four threes in in seven or eight minutes. And it, it, it was it was terrific there. All right, so here's the million dollar question <laughs> about. I mean, Rick Barnes has been positive since the Missouri game. He loved his team effort. He was there was no panic. There's clearly been no panic in this program, having lost three of four. The question now is, can this team build back to where they're going, where you want them to go? Why do they seem to play so much better against better competition, Rob? Where does this team? How does this team go from here as they head to Rupp Arena on Saturday? Well, I mean, I think this was just another reminder for them of what the blueprint is, of of what has to happen. I mean, they're if they get a track meet with Alabama tonight, especially with, with Josiah and Julian out, it, it's probably not going to end well for Tennessee. I mean, they've just got to come out and, and grind it. I don't want to necessarily say make it ugly because I, I feel like that detracts from what they do on defense, but I just think it's further reinforcement for how they have to play. And if they do play that way, they, they legit can play with anybody in the country. But if they come out, if they get away from their principles, if they get away from, you know, what has gotten them to this point, then, you know, they can lose on the road to a mediocre Florida team, by, you know, by double digits. So 
I mean, I think this just, th those two games are a microcosm for me. They're not talented enough to not be dialed in against good competition and win. But they are talented enough, and they got enough guys who are tough enough that when they are completely dialed in and take the game plan to the floor and execute it like this, they, they can legit beat anybody. Well, they took it to the floor, and they certainly beat Alabama. Crazy stat, top 15 teams on the road this year, winning at a clip of about 54%. Basket, college basketball is crazy. The parity in college basketball is nutso right now, which you, means you know Tennessee's challenge in Rupp Arena is going to be there on Saturday and going to be hard. And Tennessee, Tennessee had to get this one, Rob, and they got it. And Kentucky, I, I think I'm. I think I read this right, Hubbard. If, I, if I'm wrong, forgive me. But Kentucky pulled out all the stops, honoring the '97 and '98 national championship teams uh, on Saturday. So take that, Chris Lofton retirement jersey. <laughs> Bring, take that. Bringing everything out on Saturday. We'll see how Tennessee responds. But to this team's credit, they were responded the way Rick Barnes publicly stated his team would. He thought they would respond. He didn't guarantee a win. But he was confident. He believed his team would show, Rob. They showed in a big-time way. Yeah, they did. And before we go, the injustice to not, not give credit to the home crowd tonight. Thompson Bowling Arena was fantastic. I mean, it was phenomenal from the jump. The, the, the team fed off at Rick Barnes, as he always does. First thing he mentioned in his post-game radio show was to thank the crowd. And, I mean, I've been a lot of places. And when it's rocking it, for a big game, TBA is as good as it gets, and, and the fans, the students, they, they brought it for 40 minutes tonight. Yeah, they brought it for 40 minutes, and their, and their team gave them something to bring with them for 40 minutes. It was a great night for Tennessee basketball. We've got complete coverage of Tennessee's win over Alabama at VolQuest.com. That's going to do it for this edition of the Full Court pre Press, presented by our good friends at Craven Wings. When you're Craven Wings, it's got to be Craven Wings. Online at CravenWings.com.